So as some of you might know, this is part of a Hartman series that we're doing between Passover and Shavuot. So the plenary at our Tikkun Leil Shavuot is actually going to be the last of these sessions. And it's going to be the sanctification of time uh, is going to be the plenary at Shavuot. Uh, it's unknown. I was about to say it's unclear, but it's just unknown uh, who is going to be on that plenary stage for sure. Rabbi Klickfeld and myself uh, and possibly Rabbi Noah Farkas, um, who will be joining us for the Tikkun Leil Shavuot this year. Uh, and, and we're hoping that he's going to be one of the plenary speakers. But we are doing these classes in a particular um, kind of frame to get us from Passover to Shavuot. And there are many, many, many classes that we could pull from. These were just the ones that we thought would be most interesting for Betham and also for this period of time in between while we're counting the Omer. So today's class is on faith and blessing. So we wanted to ask you an initial question, which I'll let... Oh, you let me? Okay. Yeah. No, Which I'll let David <laughs> pose to all of you. Um, but we want to ask you an initial question, and then we're going to go through the different sources. Um, and just as a caveat from the beginning, we're not going to be able to spend as much time on all of these sources that each of these sources really deserves. We could spend hours, days, semesters on this one topic and these three sources, but we're going to spend like, you know, 20-ish minutes instead. Um, so please feel free to, to share your thoughts and also to continue to engage us in conversation around these sources. Great. So the, the question to start us off is, what are the, in general, what are the, the major ways you think of when you think of connecting with God, whatever that may mean to you? What are examples, the ways that we connect to God? Examples are like stories, moments that you've had. Right. Leave it general. We don't want to give it away. Sorry, you know? I should have not spoken. <laughs> They're going to okay. have great ideas. I know. Thoughts. It. Tom. Great. Through Torah, Torah study. study. Excellent. Star That's student. A good one. Meditation. Meditation. Music. Music. Miracles. Miracles. Very nice. Splendor wow. of nature. Great. We're going to get to that in our last source. Beautiful. Prayer. Prayer. Great. 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 So following Jewish law, whatever that means for you, whether that's actual traditional halakha or it's just the rituals and practices around, around the tradition. AJ. Great. Reflection and introspection. Great. Tom? Great. Through relationships with other people. I, I think that's a good spread. And you thank you all for, for, the, for the great ideas and for all those beautiful ways that you connect to God. But also thank you for not saying the one thing that I thought you might miss to some extent, which is through blessings. We did say prayer. Um, but one of the things we're going to raise in this conversation is, um, while sometimes blessings are involved in prayer, are they slightly different activities? Is our speaking blessings in our day-to-day -day life the same thing as our prayer services um, or not? Is it the same kind of action or is it a different thing? Um, and I think it's just interesting that we have these this multitude of ways that we can think of and conjure up quickly to, to think how we connect with the divine, with something greater than ourselves. Um, but we forget all these little blessings um, that are a, a major part of um, the Jewish day in a, in, in a traditional and not so traditional uh, environment. And so that is what this, um, what this unit is on. It's a unit about blessings and it's and we're going to take a journey and see how um the idea of how blessings function in the jewish life uh has evolved from the text that we have in the torah uh, onward aj yeah sure question
Great. So this is a great kind of framing question. Is uh, AJ was saying, is a blessing more than just an acknowledgement of God's role in our life? And if it is, what, what, what is its function? Um, I think we're going to do a little bit of exploring through these texts, um, that, but that's a really nice kind of guiding question for us to start. Okay. So if you look on the first page of the, the source sheet that got sent around, source number one is from Deuteronomy, from Devarim. I know that people on Zoom slash uh, live stream, couldn't think of that word, um, did not get this. So if you would like to look in a chumash, you're more than welcome to. It's Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter eight, starting with verse seven. Eight, seven. Um, I'm going to read because I have the microphone so that people on Zoom can hear, but please feel free to follow along. And I'm going to mostly read in the English, though I might switch over to the Hebrew for some uh, important phrases. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and depths, springing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you shall eat bread without scarcity. You shall not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig copper. Ve'achalta ve'savata uverachta. And you shall eat and you shall be satisfied and you shall bless. Adonai Elohecha, the Lord your God, for the good land which God has given you. Beware lest you forget the Lord your God, not keeping God's commandments, ordinances, and statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built goodly houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, should your heart become haughty and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage who led you through the great and dreadful wilderness, which had snakes, fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the rock of Flint, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know that God might afflict you and test you to benefit you at the end. And you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth, but you shall remember the Lord, your God, for it is God who gives you power to get wealth that God may uphold God's covenant, which God swore to your ancestors, as it is this day. So, oh, yeah. Mm, no. no I was gonna, so, what is, so what is the major um, theme here? And, and what is the function of blessing in this text? Norm? Oh, sorry. sorry. Irv. Irv. I said Norm. Sorry, Irv. I had a moment. <laughs> Gratitude. Okay. Any, any particular gratitude for what or, or how? For all, for all of this, right, which is a lot of good stuff. Yes. <clears throat> Great. So there is this, this uh, theme of, of food and these... Um, you know, the, these elements that are sustaining us, that are uh, abundant. Yes, that, that's the idea. Yes, Joey? Right, and then, and we get, we get, exactly, so making it explicit, Joey's saying, we, we see this in, it's, it's in our blessing after the meals. It becomes a liturgical text. Yes, Joel? Great. So, so Rabbi Dorf likes to say in, in our classes at Ziegler, he, he's always quoting this line, Kochi ve'otzem yadi asu et achayil, right? That, that by my strength and my uh, effort is what made all this happen, right? Which is the kind of anti-Jewish stance. Um, yes. Great. And I think of, I think of, um, of 
Mm. Great. So Rabbi Sean pointed out that this is something that we did not necessarily earn and yet need to be grateful for, need to have this this chen, this this grace around that which has, in, in this particular text, come to us, um, but that could happen upon us or could benefit us um, that we didn't necessarily have anything to do with. I think one last thing, one last comment from Tom. So there's something about the, 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 the physical and emotional experience of being sated, of getting to eat and enjoy um, all this, this unearned stuff that is the, the thing that propels you to bless. At least in, in this text, that's the idea. Do you want to share what, what trouble you had with this particular uh, view of blessing? Being called out. <laughs> um, so Hartman, Hartman pointed out in this curriculum, you know, in like the, in the teacher's kind of guide, guide yeah. um, that in the midst of success, it is easy to become arrogant and to forget those who helped one achieve that success. So similar actually to what Rabbi Sean was saying, um, but, but, I don't know, I hear Hartman's way of saying it a little bit more pessimistically than Rabbi Sean, but that's also because I love everything that Rabbi Sean says. Um, and and I don't I don't love that idea of why I should say a blessing. Right? I don't I don't love the idea of assuming that people are going to be arrogant based on that which either happens for them or that which they are able to achieve themselves and therefore we should say blessings for things. If I am someone who can buy my own groceries, which is not something that everyone can do, right? So I should be grateful to be able to do that. That should not be the reason that when I put an apple in my mouth, I say a blessing for it. It shouldn't be the fact that I, I am um, so successful that I was able to buy it. It should be that I am in awe of the fact that that apple came from a place that I'm about to bless and that I have the... Um, the yeah, the good fortune to be able to actually eat that apple. And so to me, this, this text, this, um, this formula for blessing, which we're going to get into a few others and it kind of calms down my idea here or my challenge here, but this, this idea of it being, of blessing being something that needs to remind us to be humble is just a hard it's a hard thing for me to want to then say a lot of blessings. <laughs> it doesn't sit well with me. And yeah, and I think it it fr it frames kind of a major um, a major um, weighing. You know what what how blessing is being understood is 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 it really about curbing human impulses to take things for granted, which kind of you know takes this idea that we're we're naturally gonna not be thankful unless we have these things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which, you know, we definitely certainly see people in the world who could use a little more humility and appreciation of, of what they have. And certainly that also holds for ourselves sometimes. Um, but, or is it really this positive experience of not because I'm trying to curb any impulse that I'm naturally going to have, but that I really experience the beauty and the, and the goodness of this. And I just want to do it, right? Is it like, I have to do it because you're a bad human or I want to do it because I, want to live and enjoy and appreciate. Um, great. So we can move it. Yeah, good. You want to finish? I just want to say one thing. Good, good. <laughs> um, I, th when we teach blessing to kids, we often say to them, what, what is the blessing that you say over an apple? Bray pre right? Yeah. Then we say, what do you say for the blessing over, um, a carrot, adama. What is the blessing that you say over bread? Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. The difference between the bread and the other two examples, the apple and the carrot, is that the apple and the carrot, you are blessing the source, right? You're blessing the tree and you're, bl you're blessing the ground from which they grew. When you bless bread, you're, you are saying that it's for the, for that, which the, the bread was brought out from the ground, but we know that bread didn't actually come from the ground, right? Your sourdough didn't come out of dirt. 
wheat did. And so what you're actually saying when you say hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz, which to some that is kind of the ultimate bracha because it covers all the others, you're actually blessing the hands of somebody who made that bread. And so to me, to me, this idea of blessing is putting into effect, and a little bit based on this text actually, is putting into effect all these wonderful things that yes, we were given, or yes, we are able to receive now, and to know, to know where they come from, but to also know the effort that was put into getting them to us. And we say a blessing before we put it in our mouth, and we say a blessing after we've finished which is also a very, a very important part of, of the next text that we're going to look at. Great. So uh, going to this next source um, is from Mishnah Torah, from the Rambam, um, who has, uh, you know, we're going straight into halachic codes. Uh, get Rambam, who has codified uh, all the different rulings and ideas in the, in the Mishnah and the Gemara. Um, and we're going to see... Uh, maybe a slightly different perspective on what blessing could be. So he says, um, thus all blessings can be divided into three categories. Okay, the three are birchot hanaya, blessings over benefit, birchot mitz, uh, mitzvot, right? Blessings over mitzvot, over the performance of commandments, and birchot hoda'a, right? Blessings recited as expression of praise and thanks to God. And as a means of petition, so that we will always remember the Creator and fear God. So, what do we see differently between the the text from Deuteronomy about blessing and this text? Is there anything additional or different about this this layout of of how blessings are used? Okay. Interesting. Right. <laughs> yeah, God's not in this well, one. Well, yeah. it is. It is in the in the in the third one, but there's there's pieces of the blessing that aren't about. I mean, there's pieces of the the three options that are not inherently about God. It doesn't explicitly say. That's an excuse. Well, the one thing that I that I really noticed is, um, you know, that it's not just about uh, blessing God because you have all this goodness, right? We have um, blessings over benefit. We also have blessings over meets vote, right? We also have moments of acknowledgement and appreciation of the ability to, to perform commandments, um, which doesn't seem to really be exactly explicitly laid out in, in Deuteronomy. And yet it goes back so much more to what we all said in this room about what, what brings us close to God, right? Are those things that we do whether it's practicing holidays or learning Torah, learning Torah right? Uh, being in relationship with people, all the things that Tom said. Um, <laughs> but being able to really see Judaism as living, which is what the Rambam is doing here by saying that it's over things that you benefit from, right? Or benefit you and over meets vote that you do. And then expressions of praise and thanks. Those are things that you are saying. And interestingly, the end of this part of the Rambam, the end of this, the third part here, the third section, it actually brings us back to that which we discussed in Deuteronomy, right? It, it's, it's exactly pointing us back to this idea of you need to remember God and have reverence for God. Yeah. No, it's interesting because I actually read the third one. I read A, Blessings Over Benefit, mm -hmm. even though... Deuteronomy lays it out and kind of kind of expands upon the idea. Um, I read that more as as what's in Deuteronomy that when because you're benefiting from all these things, you're oh, enjoying all these things. And I read the C as the question of um, you know our blessing as blessings within prayer, right? The question is are blessings actually the same as sure. prayer? Um, are they just tools within prayer to mm -hmm. to to make that connection? So. I see it expanding. I mean, I see the connection to it definitely, the the, the reverence for God, that it's still a vehicle for that. Mm -hmm. But that in Deuteronomy, it's a reverence for God because everything you got is great and you're doing really well. Uh, versus this yeah. is just like the reverence that is due, you know, because of being alive. Um, yeah. So I, I see it expanding in two directions. Yeah, Alan. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that's a little bit more Deuteronomy, I think, right? Like the idea of the power of God, which allowed us to then have stuff that we could then bless, right? And have blessing in our lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is maybe a little bit more um, uh, uh, work a day kind of definition of blessing. It doesn't get into the idea of like God's might and abilities that are beyond our abilities. Right, right, right. But there is the fear and the, the reverence, right? That the thanks to God and the fear. Yes. Correct. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Right. Hmm. Great. So Kathy is saying that the first source that we looked at in Deuteronomy is really explaining like the, the different kinds of, right, the different reasons for blessings, right? And like what, what a blessing really is. And then when we get to Rambam, who comes much later, it's not like Rambam comes right after the Torah, but Rambam is now putting those different kinds of blessings into categories as to how we can do them. And then potentially we would find meaning in the doing of them based on, right. based on going back to the Deuteronomy. Yep. I think we should go to the third source. Yeah. Cause again, we could spend, That's if right. anybody wants to go deeper into these sources, there's a school, it's called the Ziegler school of rabbinic studies. You're more than welcome to enroll. Um, I'm happy to write you a letter of you recommendation. You also don't have to go to Ziegler to learn Torah. Oh, just what? Just to learn Torah. You, if you oh. would like to learn Torah, you don't have to become a rabbi. I've heard. Uh, I haven't, you know, I didn't surprising. follow that expression. That's that, surprising. That, <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so this third source is from Mishnah Brachot. Yeah. In chapter nine, uh, the second Mishnah and the third Mishnah. And I, I'm going to just read through the second one pretty quickly. I, I don't know that we need to read the third one. You can decide that. Um, but I'm going to read the second one pretty quickly. Oh, the third so on witnessing comets, earthquakes, thunder, or windy storms, one says, blessed be God whose strength and might fill the world. On seeing mountains, hills, seas, rivers, or deserts, one says, blessed be God who made creation. Rabbi Yehuda says, one who sees the great sea should say, blessed be God who made the great sea. If one sees it at all intervals, for rain and for good news, one says, blessed be God that is good and grants good. For bad news, one says, blessed be the true judge. So if you were to read this in the Hebrew, which would have made a little bit more sense uh, to those who who, underst who have heard these blessings before, you would hear Baruch Hashem HaSev Reishit, you would, see, you would say here, Baruch Hashem Et Hayam HaGadol, you would hear Baruch Dayan HaEmet, which we often hear um, around death. So these, what we're now getting to in Mishnah Barachot, which comes before Maimonides, by the way, but what the Mishnah is now doing is the rabbis are saying, okay, when you see these things, this is what you say. When you see these things, this is what you say, and, and categorizing them as to when and how. Just very interesting. It doesn't say this in this particular piece, but I love this um, little bit of trivia. You're not supposed to show someone else a rainbow. There's a specific blessing for a rainbow. Are you laughing at me? Yeah, no, I'm laughing. Uh, um, I'm there's, laughing a specific, at there's a specific blessing for a rainbow, and you're not supposed to point it out to someone else because they're supposed to come upon that moment of brilliance and magnificence in nature all on their own so that they can say the blessing. Because if I say, hey, David, look at that rainbow in the sky. If there was a rainbow right now, it would be pretty, pretty cool. Um, look at that rainbow in the sky. 
he then wouldn't have the opportunity to say the bracha because I would have seen it and pointed it out to him as opposed to him happening upon it, which is what that blessing is for. We're not going to get into the halacha around that. It's just fun trivia. And next time you're at a party, you can share that piece of news. Um, it goes really, it goes really far. Again. Yeah. Um, so, what, so what's different about this, this piece of text around blessing? Yeah, Jason. Great. Great. So it's, you said it's not the everyday thing, but I would actually, I would change that into saying sometimes it is the mundane, right? Like the rain or things like that, but you're right that it's not the everyday eating of an apple. Right, it's those natural things that we might happen upon. Was it Michelle who said going out into nature? That just this idea that we find God, for some of us, we find God in these beautiful natural moments or scary natural moments, right? There, when, when natural disasters happen in this world, that to, to some, that can feel like a moment where you are witnessing God, whether that's in the people who are helping out or just in the magnificence of, of nature being able to destroy like that. Tom, did you want to say something? Ah, uh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you said experiential and transactional, right? That, that there's, there's this, there's this sense in in Mishnah Brachot of us giving blessing based on things that we witness, whether or not God is either witnessing them with us or would care that we're witnessing them, right? Whereas if you happen upon or not happen upon, if you're celebrating something or you're putting an apple in your mouth, the i the that moment is supposed to connect you with God in, in such a way that it does feel transactional or relational. And these things are just about you witnessing and experiencing life around you. I think, I think one, if we do one more line of this, of this, uh, of, of mission of the third Mishnah in this uh, chapter nine, um, I think it, it d defines something very different from where we started in Deuteronomy. Um, so it, it says, um, Upon when one has built a new house or brought bought new vessels, you say Shechianu, uh, right? You say Baruch Shechianu v'Kiyamanu v'Yanu Zmanazeh, who brought us to this moment. But the main thing I want to say is one who blesses over the evil as over the good, or blesses over the good as over the evil, right? Um, oh, actually, is that saying behold? That's a vain prayer. Is that yeah. how they're translating it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was saying I, I thought it was saying initially that you bless over the good and the bad, which is actually true based on what we said that you say um, that you say um, you know you say Baruch Dayan Hamed, but you also say Baruch Hatov Ametiv, right? You're blessing over both positive and negative things. So actually, that part doesn't say that, but just the fact that we mentioned um, not just when you got a lot of grain in the storehouse. And not just when things feel great and, you know, you're, you're on a roll, but also the moments, you know, and this is the hardest part. I, I'm not saying it's, uh, it's easy. It, it often feels very difficult. But, you know, even just hearing not great news, you're, to, to bring God into that in some way, even if God may not be the cause of it necessarily, um, is what they're saying that actually it's not just about when things are great, you should bless God so you keep your ego low, but also bless on on the on the not great things as well. Yeah, AJ. Right. Yeah, I think maybe it actually does say that in Hebrew and not. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if if that translation is correct, then 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 it's saying that somebody who would bless the same way on something good that they do on something bad is 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 narishkeit, right? It's, it's not. It's it doesn't make sense. It's not actually the right idea. Alan, did you want to say something? Then? <laughs> Great. Right. Right. Totally. And and the beautiful thing is actually that they are different blessings, right? That they we we still bless and that's where the similarities end, right? That 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 we are specific about what those moments are. Um yes, Joey. Mm. Oh sorry. And then Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Right. Exactly. So, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we have to end. I, we went even over what, how much, and we, and we could keep going forever. But yeah, yeah. No, I I see. There were other hands. I'm just. But we're gonna end. Um, so the the main takeaway from this is that there are different ways for us in Judaism to say blessings to bring God into all of our moments. So it's actually a beautiful, this conversation that happened at the end here is actually a beautiful way of us remembering that it's not just at the bar mitzvah and at the birth and at the wedding. It's also in the moments of Shiva and in the moments of a yard site and in the moments of death that we bring in the sanctification of blessing and of God, because God isn't only supposed to be present for us in the rainbows, but also God is present for us in the earthquakes. And so when we're looking through these different sources, what Hartman is trying to point out for us and what I think we've come to today in, in this room is the fact that we really situate ourselves in a tradition that allows us to have these 100 blessings that we're supposed to say throughout a day so that God is being brought into each one of those little moments. So I hope, unless David has a final word, I hope that we are able to go into this next week really finding those moments for blessing. They don't need to be in the formula of blessing that you saw here today. They don't even need to go according to the blessings that you read about here today. But just to think about the different ways in which we acknowledge blessing in the life that we're living. And remember that it doesn't have to just be in the good moments. So when you're struggling, say a blessing for whatever you're struggling for or for the strength to get, get through that struggle. But to be able to have 100 blessings a day to bring God into each one of the moments throughout your life.